Hello, hello. Very good morning. You're watching the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha television this Monday morning. Here are the headlines. Those behind Uri attack won't go unpunished, says Prime Minister. Home Minister says Pakistan, a terror state, calls for its isolation. Home Secretary to review situation today. Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari says Uri attack a result of use of cross-border terror by one particular country. India says Pakistan using poison instead of dialogue as it launches a strong protest at the NAM summit. Kaveri Supervisory Committee to meet in Delhi to decide quantum of water to be released to Tamil Nadu and other states. Security beefed up in Karnataka to avoid untoward incidents. And United Russia Party backed by Russian President Vladimir Putin far ahead in the parliamentary elections. Exit poll suggest it has taken 44% of the votes poll. Top focus on the bulletin this morning. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that those behind the terror attack in Uri will not be spared. While India has raised the pitch for terming Pakistan a terror state, Islamabad has sought actionable proof of its involvement. Yes, more. President Pranam Mukherjee's reaction to the Uri attacks, calling it outrageous. The assurance for action against perpetrators of the deadly attack coming from the Prime Minister. The Home Minister calling for the immediate need to isolate Pakistan, calling it in no less words a terrorist state. He said the attackers were well trained. After postponing his scheduled visit to Russia and the US, Rajnath Singh held a high-level review meeting in Delhi. Home Secretary Rajiv Maharishi will be in Srinagar today to review the situation. अंतरराष्ट्रीय स्तर पर भी पाकिस्तान एक प्रकार से अलग थलग आइसोलेट कंपलीटली हो जाए स्वाभाविक है कि हमारी कूटनीति देश की उस दिशा में भी काम करेगी डिफेंस मिनिस्टर मनोहर पारिकर एंड आर्मी चीफ जनरल दलबीर सिंह विजिटेड कश्मीर ऑन संडे टू रिव्यू द ओवरऑल सिक्योरिटी सिचुएशन the defense minister instructing the army to take firm action against those responsible india stepping up the pressure on pakistan saying india is not the lone victim to the country's continued support to terror elements time has come for the world to declare pakistan as a terrorist state and isolate it ek proxy war hai isme aur ek ek desh jo hai pakistan jo isi mein laga hua hai is tarike se jammu kashmir mein afra tafri machai jaye Pakistan rejecting India's charge is totally baseless and irresponsible. Islamabad alleging that India has a history of blaming Pakistan after every terror strike. Islamabad has asked India to share any actionable intelligence regarding the involvement of the country in the attack. The country also blaming India for using the terror attack to divert attention from the unrest in Kashmir. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the Uri militant attack has been uh, one of the worst in recent history with 17 army personnel being killed and over 20 injured in a Sunday morning ambush. The condition of some of those injured is said to be critical. The army says that the attack bears the markings of Pakistan and that the terrorists belong to the Daesh Mohammed group. In the worst single strike on the army in Jammu and Kashmir in 26 years, 17 army personnel were killed and 20 injured by four heavily armed terrorists on Sunday morning. The terrorists, suspected to be from Pakistan-based Jaish-e Mohammed, sneaked into the administrative buildings and store complex of 10 Dogra Infantry Battalion in Uri sector around 6 kilometers from the line of control. The terrorists lobbed 17 grenades in 3 minutes which resulted in a massive fire burning barracks and tents in a 150 meter radius. 13 soldiers who were sleeping were burnt alive and 17 soldiers were critically injured with severe burns. The attack took place during a change of command where 10 Dogra regiment was in the process of moving out making space for the 6 Bihar regiment soldiers. Subah 5:30 baje puri sector mein military base pe टेरिस्ट अटैक हुआ और ये रेयर सेक्शन में हुआ जहाँ पे एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव सेक्शन था और फायरिंग के वजह से टेंटों में आग लगी और वहाँ के बिल्डिंग में आग लगी अनफॉर्चुनेटली हमारे सत्रह जवान शहीद हो गए और चार टेरिस्ट मारे गए 
The brutal attack ended three hours later at 8.30 a.m. with the killing of four terrorists. Army sources said the terrorists sneaked into the camp via nalas at the periphery of the camp, breaching the seven-foot-high rear wall by cutting the barbed wire at about 4.30 a.m. The weapons recovered from the slain terrorists, four AK-47 rifles, four underbarrel grenade launchers and ammunition had Pakistani markings. Since the terrorists had some items which had Pakistani markings on that, I have spoken to the Pakistan Director General of Military Operations and conveyed our serious concerns about the same. During this firefight, all four terrorists have been killed by the Indian Army. The killed terrorists, they were all foreign terrorists, and as per the initial reports, they belong to Jaish-e Mohammed Tanzim. From the morning until afternoon on Sunday, army helicopters conducted more than 20 sorties to ferry the injured soldiers to the hospital. Seven of the 20 injured soldiers who were evacuated in helicopters to the 92 base hospital in Srinagar are said to be in critical condition. Out of the 17 martyrs, 15 were from the 6th Bihar Regiment and 2 to the 10 Dogra Regiment. The attack comes two years after militants had carried out a similar type of attack at Mohra in the same area. On December 5, 2014, six militants stormed an army camp at Uri and killed eight soldiers, including a lieutenant colonel, three Jammu and Kashmir policemen. This was the third attack on the army in North Kashmir in the past one month. Earlier, terrorists had attacked an army convoy in Baramulla town, killing two soldiers. In another attack, three soldiers were injured. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, major political parties and leaders strongly condemned the terrorist attack on an army base at Uri in which 17 soldiers lost their lives. Here are some of the reactions from different party leaders. <laughs> We are very sad about this uh, entire uh, uh, incident and the entire country uh, stands behind uh, the army of our country. We show total solidarity with the uh, forces of our country and there should not be any sign of demoralization irrespective of political, which political party we may belong to. We are with the forces. The brigade headquarters are uh, uh, Indian Army. Ka hai. उड़ी में उसमें जो है फिदाइन हमला हुआ है और टीवी चैनल के मुताबिक समझा जाता है कि चार फिदाइन कैंप में घुसे हैं और ये कोई नई बात है नहीं। We condemn this terrorist attack and we also warn Pakistan to not indulge in this sort of cross-border terrorism that should be taken up seriously and this is terrorism is not a solution to the current crisis in Kashmir. That can only be solved through a political dialogue with all the stakeholders. Pakistan, जो है वो पूरी तरह से कश्मीर की जो समस्या है घाटी की उसका पूरा लाभ उठा रहा है। भारत सरकार को इस पर गंभीरता से सब लोगों से सब पार्टियों सलाम अस्तरा करके क्या आगे कदम उठाया जाए इसका जरूर विचार करना चाहिए। पूरे कराई के साथ Meanwhile, India has lodged a strong protest at the NAM summit over the URI attack. Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari said that such an attack is a result of one country sponsoring cross-border terror. Minister of State for External Affairs M.J. Akbar said that Pakistan was using poison instead of dialogue to resolve issues. Here's more. India has yet again made a strong pitch against terrorism, seeking concrete action and setting up of a mechanism by the non-aligned movement countries to fight it off. No cause justifies the indiscriminate killing of innocent civilians as a means to achieve a political goal or change of policies. Terrorism is one of the most egregious sources of human rights violations today and its use as an instrument of state policy is to be unequivocally condemned. The Vice President's remarks came against the backdrop of India raising its concerns at various international fora over Pakistan's support to cross-border terrorism. 
The vice president also strongly condemned the terrorist attack on the army administrative base in Uri on Sunday. In a statement, he said that such attacks are the result of the use of cross-border terrorism by one particular country in our region. We shall deal with such provocations in a befitting manner. Earlier, the NAM Summit Minister of State for External Affairs, M.J. Akbar, lodged a strong protest against Islamabad for its mischievous and malignant support to terror. Akbar said that the terrorist attack in Uri has highlighted Pakistan's desire to use poison instead of dialogue. Pakistan has reduced itself to pariah status in the international community because of its hypocrisy, because of its blatant sponsorship of terrorism, of terrorists, because it gives sanctuary, support, both domestic and international to terrorists, because of its investment in this evil and menace of terrorism. Meanwhile, Pakistan raised the Kashmir issue at the 17th NAM summit and said peace in South Asia cannot be achieved without the settlement of the issue of Jammu and Kashmir in accordance with the resolutions of the UN Security Council. With camera person Saroj Kumar Das, Shyam Sundar and Shiva Kumar's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Now, both the U.S. and Britain condemned the terrorist attack in Uri. The U.S. state issued, by, issued a statement by the State Department spokesperson John Kirby, and he said that the United States strongly condemns the terrorist attack on an Indian army base in Kashmir. We extend our condolences uh, to the victims and their families. The United States is committed to our strong partnership with the Indian government to combat terrorism. Meanwhile, British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson said that the UK strongly condemns this terrorist attack in Kashmir. I offer my deepest condolences to the victims and their families and friends. The UK condemns all forms of terrorism and stands shoulder to shoulder with India in the fight against terrorism and in bringing the perpetrators to justice. Terrorism is there in the Kashmir from Pakistan, Pakistani militants are going freely over there. We can't say that the state is involved, but the state policies are behind that, that they cannot control this thing. Meanwhile, curfew continues to remain in force for the 73rd consecutive day today in several parts of Kashmir, including in some areas of Srinagar. The security has also been beefed up in the wake of the deadly Uri terror attack. Normal life in the valley continues to remain disrupted. Curfew is in place in Shopia, Bandipora and Gandharbal after a separatist call for a march to these three districts. Police and paramilitary forces have been heavily deployed in curfew-bound areas of Srinagar and other towns. Shops, commercial establishments and petrol pumps remain closed and traffic is off the roads. Clashes and protests were reported on Sunday from several South, North and Central Kashmir areas. The violence in the wake of killing of Hezbollah militant Burhan Wani has left 81 people dead. Meanwhile, in a significant political development, PDP's leader Nisar Ahmad Mandu on Sunday resigned from the party saying that he cannot side with what he called was bloodbath of Kashmiris. He is the second prominent leader to resign in the wake of the ongoing unrest in Kashmir. Tariq Hamid Khara, founding member of the PDP and Lok Sabha member, had earlier resigned from Srinagar constituency. Well, it's time for a short break now, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Arisen from a multi hued cultural canvas. Tradition and cultural fervor dating back centuries. Thank you, thank you. 
And encircling them all, there's a magic that awes. Embrace your nation's brilliant human warmth. Watch Colors of India, Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, today the Kaveri Supervisory Committee will meet in New Delhi to decide on the quantum of water to be released to Tamil Nadu. The committee, headed by Union Water Resources Secretary Shashi Shekhar, is analyzing the data given by Karnataka and Tamil Nadu government, and the decision may differ if the information provided is found to be inadequate. According to PTI, both the states have submitted data to the committee about withdrawal of water, its utilization, variation in rainfall and its impact on the actual runoff over a period of 29 years in their respective Kaveri Basin areas. The panel had sought the information from them in its last meeting on September 12th. Earlier, the Supreme Court had asked Tamil Nadu government to approach the Kaveri Supervisory Committee on the quantum of water to be released after the period of 10 days was over. The security has been beefed up in different parts of Karnataka ahead of the meeting. Unfortunate hai ki Supreme Court ka judgment bahuti impractical और ग्राउंड रियलिटी को देखकर नहीं दिया गया ये हमारा मत है लेकिन अब सुप्रीम कोर्ट को क्रिटिसाइज तो नहीं कर सकते हैं उसका आदन उसका आदेश पालन करने के लिए कर्नाटक का गवर्नमेंट को पानी छोड़ना पड़ा अब छोड़ रहे हैं लेकिन सबसे बड़ी कठिनाई की बात यह है कि कर्नाटक के लोगों को पीने के लिए पानी नहीं है Going on to some international news now, the latest Russian election is unlikely to loosen President Vladimir Putin's grip on power. United Russia Party, backed by Putin, is far ahead in the nation's parliamentary election, taking at least 44% of the votes. This is what an exit poll has suggested. Now, speaking at the United Russia headquarters, Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev, who is also the party's chairman, announced victory. Putin has enjoyed 17 years in power as either president or prime minister and does not belong to any designated party. But he visited the headquarters of United Russia with Medvedev after the vote to congratulate activists on their victory. The nationalists LDPR and the Communist Party are way behind United Russia with about 14 to 16 percent of the vote share each. Meanwhile, in the Liberal Opposition, parties failed to pass the 5 percent threshold needed for party list representation. The turnout was significantly down from the 2011 elections, just below 40 percent. Voters were choosing 450 MPs in the state Duma for the next five years. Mikhail Kasyanov, uh, the former Russian Prime Minister and the leader of opposition Parnas party, said that the vote was not free and fair and that the low turnout was a dangerous sign. Трудно, тяжело, а люди все равно за Единую Россию не проголосовали. Ну, во-первых, о чем я думаю, о чем это говорит? Говорит о том, что во всяком случае люди видят, что представители Единой России, ведущие политической силы, Реально стараются для людей. Понятно, что выборы, как они мы изначально, в самом, когда мы входили в эти выборы, мы говорили, что они не свободные и несправедливые. Сейчас мы будем уже говорить о третьем факторе. Достоверны ли сами, сами данные по голосованию? Meanwhile, investigations continue into Saturday's bomb attack in New York City, but so far no links have been found to global groups and the motive remains unclear. Two days after a bombing injured 29 people in Manhattan, police are still scouring the area for clues. A few blocks away from the blast site, investigators found a pressure cooker with wiring and a mobile phone. But it's unclear whether that suspicious uh, device has any connection to Saturday's explosion. The blast shook New York City's Chelsea neighborhood and sent panicked people scrambling for cover. The mayor of the New York City called uh, the bombing an intentional and criminal act, but declined calling it a terrorist attack. Meanwhile, after the incident, some 1,000 extra security personnel are being deployed to New York's transport hubs. On Tuesday, President Obama and other world leaders are due to attend the UN General Assembly in New York. 
uh, we felt like it was it was kind of close to an earthquake feeling, but you knew the sense, you knew the sound that it was something kind of kind of crazy. You knew you knew it was something bad when it happened. We know there was a bombing. That much we do know. We know it's a very serious incident, but we have a lot more work to do to be able to say what kind of motivation was behind this. Was it a political motivation, a personal motivation? What was it? We do not know that yet. Here's a roundup of the other international news and world wrap. Four airstrikes hit rebel-held parts of the Syrian city of Aleppo, the first raids there since a ceasefire began last Monday. Several people were injured, but it isn't clear who carried out these strikes. Earlier, the US-led coalition struck the Syrian army in Deir al-Zur on Saturday, killing 60 people. The development prompted UN emergency meeting and Russia saying future of the truce is in doubt. The US military said that the coalition believed it was attacking IS positions. German Chancellor Angela Merkel's CDU party has suffered big losses in Berlin state elections, exit polls suggest. Now the party is expected to be ousted from the state governing coalition with the centre-left Social Democrats. Meanwhile, the right-wing anti-migrant party alternative for Germany is projected to enter the state parliament for the first time. Merkel's popularity has waned since her decision last year to allow more than a million migrants into Germany. A Somali general and at least six of his bodyguards have been killed by a suicide car bomber. The attacker rammed a car carrying explosives into General Mohammed Jimale Goodbale's convoy near the Defence Ministry headquarters in Somalian capital of Mogadishu. Al-Shabaab claimed the attack and accused the general of plotting against them. Al-Shabaab opposes the government of President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed, who is backed by Western powers and seeking re-election. China and Russia have carried out joint naval exercises in the South China Sea off China's southern Guangdong province. The drills come nearly two months after an international tribunal dismissed Beijing's claims to most of the waters. Vessels including a missile destroyer, anti-submarine vessels, missile frigates, ship-based helicopters and conventional submarines among others took part in the exercise. Moving on to some sports news now and news from the Rio Paralympic Games which have come to an end. During the closing ceremony, the flag for the 2020 Games was handed to Tokyo. The Paralympic Games held in the Brazilian capital of Rio saw 11 days of competition. China dominated the medals table followed by Britain, Ukraine and the United States. The Indian athletes also did well. India's 19-member team won two gold, one silver and one bronze medal. In men's high jump, Maria Pantangavelu won the gold medal while Varun Singh Bharti won the bronze. Deepa Malik bagged a silver in the shot put, thus becoming the first Indian para-athlete to win a medal at the Games. Devendra Jajaria won the second gold for India in javelin by surpassing his own record that he set in the 2004 edition of the Games. Well, meanwhile, in Davis Cup World Group Playoff, India suffered a final whitewash at the hands of Spain on Sunday. Indian youngster Sumit Nagpal produced a spirited performance on his Davis Cup debut before going down 3-6-6-1-3-6 to Mark Lopez of Spain in the first reverse singles of their World Group tie on Sunday. On Sunday, while David Ferrer got the better of Ram Kumar Ramnathan 6-2-6-2, Spain had taken an unassailable 3-0 lead in the five-match tie to book a spot in the World Group on Saturday. They then increased their lead to 4-0 and then later made it 5-0 on Sunday and returned to the World Group after a gap of two years. Well, that's it on this edition of the Breakfast News. Have a good day.